Hello guys, welcome back to my channel once again here on YouTube. Thank you very much for joining me for this straight out of Dudleyville, the legacy of the Dudley Boys Blu-ray review. Uh, this was uh, kindly gifted to me from my new friend Dan Parker. So cheers again for that dude, I appreciate that. This was put up with Royal Rumble 2022. Night of Champions 2015 and AEW Blood and Guts DVDs stroke Blu-rays as choices. We we had to pick two, or you guys had to pick two on my Facebook page. And this one and the Royal Rumble were the top two most voted for for review for this week. This one finished first place. So let's get into this one then, guys. So I've after doing some extensive research before watching this, as well as this version, there's also obviously a free disc DVD set and a steelbook version of this as well, a limited edition steelbook Blu-ray version. Also, the US and Canada had a DVD release which had a slip cover which turned into a, a little table with legs underneath, which I thought was absolutely awesome. So if I ever come across that, I'd, l I'd like to add that to my collection. It's just the the novelty of having that. It's just something different and really cool. So unfortunately, my fr uh, friend Dan didn't like this one very much. Um, so I was getting some negative vibes <laughs> when I put it in my uh, PlayStation 4 to watch for this review. I thought, oh no, is it really going to be that bad? But we'll go into that in a second. Let's talk about the uh, the artwork first. Straight out of Dudleyville is kind of like a parental advisory logo, but with the straight out of Dudleyville written in there instead. And they're wearing their awesome camo trademark um, attire, which is cool on the front with the tables. There's the spine. Two disc set, if I didn't say that already, guys, sorry. 15 certificate here in the UK, free mantle media release. Discs. We have Bubba Ray on disc one, and Devon on disc two. I'll get the, uh, the insert, not the insert, sorry, the cover art work out in a minute because it has the matches, match listing on the inside, which we'll cover. Eight hours, ten minute runtime, and got the Dudleys together carrying a table to the ring there with the old SmackDown entrance arena. I think that is bring back uh, brings back memories. That one does. A really old looking picture of them there. I think that could be from ECW. Let me put that down and then I can read this to you guys. So. Devon get the tables. For the first time ever, WWE Home Video sits down with Bubba Ray and Devon Dudley as they share their insight into how they became one of the most successful tag teams in all of sports entertainment. From their formation in ECW to the notorious TLC matches in WWE to their departure and return back to WWE, this set covers the trials and tribulations of the Dudley's entire career. Sorry guys, that writing's really small. <laughs> Get to know the superstars behind the tapped up glasses, tapped up, taped up, <laughs> and see how the Dudley boys turn the tables on the tag team competition. Sorry about that guys, it's just hard to read from back here. Taped up, taped up glasses. Anyway, feature in. Barely legal uh, 97 ECW Tag Team Championship match against the Eliminators. We have a WrestleMania 17 match, which is that TLC World Tag Team Championship match against H Hardy Boys and Edge and Christian. And One Night Stand 2005 against Tommy Dreamer and Sandman. That's just some of the matches on there. I'll take it out so we can um, have a look, as I said, at the 
matches and everything else on the discs. So disc one is the documentary itself. I'm not sure if you can see that on the camera there very well. Guys, I do apologize for that. So yeah, the, the documentary is pretty good. It's basically, this is kind of set when, when they returned to WWE after quite a long time away, because they were in TNA for a while when they left around 2005 I think that was and yeah it, it talks about like when well only briefly it talks about when B uh, Bubba Ray or Bully Ray was world champion in TNA plus what they were doing when they were away they were in Japan for a bit also talks about their early years how they met and what they'd done when they grew up and their singles runs. I I think it was okay, I guess. I didn't find anything wrong with the documentary after thinking to myself, oh no, is it going to be that bad? But it was okay. We've got various extras. Um, quite a lot of matches varying from their ECW days to some of the Raw is War stuff. The first ECW invasion in 1997, there's a few uh, matches there as well. Raw and Barely Legal, Heatwave 98, some ECW on TNN matches as well. If I keep still, you'll be able to read them, hopefully, guys. And then we, we go on to disc two. which covers their awesome match at the Royal Rumble 2001 against Edge and Christian in that uh, tag team championship match. Got the TLC matches on there, or one of, anyway, the WrestleMania 17 one. And various uh, SmackDown matches there as well. Got Survivor Series 2001 steel cage match to unify the WWE and WCW Tag Team Championship against the Hardy Boys, which was another classic match, in my opinion. Got some singles matches as well against uh, Bubba Ray against Brock Lesnar and Devon against Triple H. Bubba Ray even getting a World Heavyweight Championship match against Triple H in September 2002, which was pretty cool. And then a few from Judgment Day, One Night Stand. One I noticed they haven't got on here is that uh, handicap match against The Undertaker, The Great American Bash 2004, which was a shame really because that was quite an interesting one. Concrete Crip match or whatever it was where Paul Heyman got... Um, Buried alive in concrete. I think something like that. <laughs> yeah. Can you guys remember that one? Let me know in the comments below. Our Blu-ray exclusive extras were Rebellion from 2000, which was the Dudleys versus Testin Albert versus Edge and Christian in a tables elimination match. Unforgiven 2003 was a handicap tables match for the World Tag Team Championship. So they were against La Resistance and Rob Conway. There was a match from Raw uh, when the Dudley boys came back to the WWE, which was on August 24th, 2015. So maybe just after SummerSlam, around that kind of time. SmackDown uh, 2015, we had, uh, again in August, the Dudley boys against The Ascension as an extra on Blu-ray and then on Raw December 14th 2015 Extreme Rules 8 man tag match sorry this writing is so small I do apologize guys the Dudley boys Tommy Dreamer and Rhino versus the Wyatt family now I didn't watch that match and I did skip one or two of the other matches which was a bit naughty of me but I did pick some of the ones that stood out, and yeah, I could say some of the extras were pretty interesting on this. It isn't a bad, uh, a bad set at all. I, I guess you've got to be a really big Dudley Boy fan to appreciate it. 
a few things I want to say. One of them is, I think Spike Dudley should have been included in this set. And I know a lot of people probably argue with, with me uh, uh, saying that, but I think he was underappreciated of his accomplishments in ECW and definitely his uh, WWF run. He did pick up a few title victories as well. I'm pretty sure. Did he not win like the Hardcore Championship and maybe maybe the European Championship or something like that? I can't remember, but why wasn't he included in this? He, he, he was a Dudley boy as well. Surely he should have been included in this set, but it doesn't matter. That's just my opinion, guys. And I'm interested in getting the uh, still book of this now as well to go with this one. I'm not the biggest Dudley Boy fan, as I said, but I do appreciate the documentary and the set that's been put together. They're not ranked in my top five best tag teams, so I don't put them up there with the Steiner Brothers or the Road Warriors, Legion of Doom, or whatever you want to call them. Arguably, you know, maybe they are a good tag team to be up there with those guys but they are hall of famers after all but that's just my opinion just because i don't follow a certain team or a certain wrestler as well as i do others doesn't mean i don't like them or appreciate the work they do it's still good to go and watch a documentary about wrestlers if, even if you hate them yes i i am considering watching some triple h stuff soon maybe <laughs> but yeah no seriously guys this this isn't a bad set Altogether, I'll give it a six and a half out of ten. I didn't mind it at all, as I said. It, the Blu-ray version obviously was the better choice, and I'm glad that uh, Dan chose me to take this uh, take this on as a gift. And I'm grateful to you for that, Dan. As I said, mate, thank you very much. So yes, guys, I don't know if I could review it any better than that. It's I don't know if I'm going to return to it again anytime soon. It's it's one of those you'll pick up every few years and probably take off your shelf and think, yeah, I've watched that for a while. Let's give it a good go again. As I said, it's not boring or anything, but you've got to be a really hardcore Dudley Boy Van, uh, Dudley Boy Van, Dudley Boys fan <laughs> to appreciate this one. And I haven't put that in properly. <laughs> anyway, guys, let me know in the comments below. As I said, if you like this, do you own it? Do you think it's a good set? I'd like to hear your comments. Please feel free to like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. And I'm sorry if this review feels all over the place. I just I just don't know what else to say about it, really. It's, as I said, it's not a bad Blu-ray. I, I don't know. As I said, 6.5 out of 10, that's my score for it. Yeah. So stay safe then, guys. Thank you for putting up with me with this review. Take good care of yourselves, and I'll see you again soon. Peace.